Good morning. This is part of our Sanctuary series, and Sanctuary is our mental health awareness um, theme this year. Um, sanctuary should be a place where you can come and you can be calm and you can be um, renewed um, and also feel safe. And so uh, this is why we chose this word, as we hope the church is that sort of place for those for all of us with our mental health issues and concerns. Um, there are really two prongs to these videos. The first is the interviews with Brittany and Joe Mason. These are two doctors in our community, a psychiatrist, a part of our church family. And a part of this series is those interviews with them about various issues, and I hope you'll watch those. The other prong, the one that we're doing today, is talking about a book, all right? And talking about a book that is specifically about mental health. And I'll be specific, it's mental health and children, okay? Now, I doubt that there's any children watching this video. There are grandparents and there are parents. And so I realized that when I hold up a book and, you know, by going through it, give you sort of my review of it, that you might go out and purchase it. You might go to the library and review it. That's fine. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. If not this book, a book similar to it. And this book is called The Calm Workbook. All right. The Calm Workbook. And it's by Imogene Harrison, who's actually British. I want to walk you through a few things in this book because I find it to be very curious and interesting and helpful. Uh, there's a section at the beginning about being a parent and a caregiver. And I think that section is qu a quick read. It's only two or three pages long. And it's worth sort of introducing yourself to what your role is here with children. And then there's this really special section early in the book called Hi There. And it goes, it asks some questions. Here are some questions to ask yourself. Do you often get frustrated or upset with faced with a new situation or challenge? Now think about the children in your life. When they're faced with a new challenge, do they get upset about it, frustrated by it? And now a lot of you adults are saying, I do the same thing. But yeah, we all do. In fact, it's probably sort of pre-wired in us that you know, when we face something new, we oftentimes get frustrated a bit by it. Do you feel nervous when it's your turn to do something? You know, a lot of people in this world are very confident people and they never get nervous about doing anything. And then there's a lot of people like me who every time you ask them to do something new, they get nervous and sweaty palms about it. You may have a child or a grandchild that you notice who gets really nervous when they're asked to do something new. When they come home in the third grade and they have to do a book report, they've never done a book report, it just overwhelms them. They find it hard to calm down when your feelings, big feelings. They find it hard to calm down when you're feeling big feelings, you know, like anxiety or uh, grief. And so that's a good question to ask. They feel like everything is out of control. You know, sometimes as adults, we even feel like things are out of control. But can you imagine being a three-year-old or a five-year-old or a 10-year-old or a 14-year-old? Yeah. We can get really, you know, rough when you feel like things are out of control. And so I really don't, I recommend that section as well. And it's really early in the book to sort of lay a foundation of why you're having these conversations and doing these activities. Now, I should say that this is more of an activity book, all right? Now, it may prompt conversation. It may prompt some feelings, but more or less, it is activity driven. So activity means that they're really doing something, okay? And I wanna just share with you a couple of the activities. Oh, there's, I'm sure there's, oh, I would imagine there's, that looks like about 50 to 60 different activities. But one of them is stretch to reset. All right. If you're feeling uneasy, try having a stretch. When you stretch, it sends a signal to your heart to pump blood to your muscles, which makes them feel good. 
Stretching can also make your body release hormones called endorphins, which makes you feel happy. Try these simple stretches and enjoy the feeling of being a tree, a butterfly, or a fish. And those are various positions. Now, when I can't imagine that it, it strikes me really odd, I guess, that even when I was raised in the 70s, that I had a teacher who was this smart, that when we were given a test, the day that we had the test, we came into the classroom, we took our seats, she called row, and then she asked us all to stand up before she even handed the test out. And she asked us to stretch as far as we could up to the ceiling. And then she asked us to bend over and if we could to touch our toes. And then she asked us to put our hands on our hips and just kind of swivel back and forth like this. And then she asked us to turn to a partner and do some sort of hand clapping pattern. And then we took our seats and we took our test. That was real wisdom. That was a way some might say, well, it's just a bit of distraction. Others might say, like she says, that it's releasing endorphins and it's getting you prepared for being mentally focused. But it had a way of calming us all down. It was absolutely brilliant. And so maybe you could get with your children or your grandchildren when they are struggling and teach them that maybe one of the things that they could do when they have some, they're facing a new challenge or they're facing something for the first time to just stretch, just physically move a little bit, you know, to get their bodies moving and that it will calm their mind. Now, another um, interesting um, section was this section called Just Seeing. Singing makes us happy. Not only are there the physical benefits of deeper breaths, which boost our oxygen intake, but there's the release of those endorphins again when you're concentrating on making music, your mind is distracted from your worries. You could have a sing-along playlist for the car or learn some campfire songs along with the actions and movements. Now, this would be, and then there's a section over here where you can kind of fill in your list of sing-along songs. Now, this may be very different for a five-year-old or a 10-year-old, but music is great therapy to calming our spirits. And so you, maybe you could sit down with your child or your grandchild and you could go through this and you could have them have some songs that how do you feel when you sing this song or what songs make you feel calm? What songs make you feel happy and joyful? And then that becomes their playlist. And that becomes something that they can maybe study with. It maybe becomes something that they sing in the car or maybe something that you remind them of when they're in a moment where they're frustrated and you can say, hey, why don't you sing that song by Taylor Swift or whatever, okay? Now, as I said, there are plenty of other activities and exercises all through the book. I recommend grandparents and parents, you know, take a moment, get the book, look through the activities, see what's appropriate for your five-year-old, see what's appropriate for your 12-year-old, and then try to implement them. You know, the thing is, you don't necessarily have to sit down with a book in front of them. You can just learn from the book and pass that knowledge along to them as you're riding in a car or pass that knowledge along with them as you're helping them study. But you have this as a resource. It's the Calm Workbook. All right. Thank you.